The DE5000 LCR meter is a great little meter. I use it a lot. It's economical, well built, and has an easy self calibration procedure. One of the things I don't like about it, however, are the clips that come with it. They're simply alligator clips at the end of a very short, shielded cable. Recently, YouTuber TRX Bench has shown how to replace these with more helpful Kelvin clips. That video is linked in below. I recommend watching it. In this video, I ask the question of whether it really matters from a measurement perspective if Kelvin clips or alligator clips are used in the case of four wire measurement of low resistance conductors. To begin with, I follow the same procedure described on the TRX Bench channel for installing the Kelvin clamps. However, I ordered a replacement of the entire clip assembly. I figured that would be easier to compare measurements using the two different sets of clips. Here is one of the alligator clip leads uh, removed from the lead assembly. You can see it's just a regular alligator clip and you see the three leads here including the copper shield. Here's the other lead that came with it and you can see that all, uh, all connections take place right at the head of the alligator clip. This isn't a Kelvin clip because the current carrying lead is connected to the voltage sensing lead at the head of the alligator clip and it's not kept separate until the point of the measurement. The experimental setup I used consisted of a segment of 18 gauge copper wire. The specs of 18 gauge wire show a diameter of one millimeter. I verified that that was so using a digital caliper. The green tape marks off three 15 centimeter segments of wire. Given the length and diameter of the wire, we can estimate what the resistance of a given length of wire should be. References suggest that the resistivity of copper is in the neighborhood of 1.68 to 1.72 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. So, as we've discussed in previous videos, we can evaluate the expression for the resistance of a cylinder of a conductor, where the cylinder has a cross-sectional area A and a length L, and the material has a resistivity of rho. In the case of a cylinder, which a wire is essentially a cylinder, the area is pi r squared, where r is the radius of the wire, but we just measured a one millimeter diameter, and the diameter divided by two is the radius. So the area of the wire is pi d squared over four. That can be substituted into the formula for resistance, and we see that the resistance is really 4 rho L over pi d squared. Now, we know the diameter, we know the length of three segments of wire, and I measured them off, as I said, to be 15, 30, and 45 centimeters. So, using the different estimates of the resistivity of copper, we can come up with ranges that the measured resistance of those lengths of wire should be. In the case of 15 centimeters, the resistance measured should be in the neighborhood of 3.2 3 uh, to 3.3 3 milliohms. In the case of 30 centimeters of copper wire, the resistance measured should be in the neighborhood of 6.4 to 6.6 6 milliohms. And then finally, for 45 centimeters, we should get around 9.6 to 9.9 .9 milliohms. Here are the Kelvin clamps that I installed. And just going to clip them up to the full length of 45 centimeters of wire. And move this over here so that we can see the display. Okay, and it thinks right off the bat that the resistance is so small that it checks it for an inductance. But if we cycle through to get a resistance, we get nine milliohms of resistance. Okay, now let's just see if that makes sense. If we go down to 30 centimeters, we should get two thirds of that, 
or six milliohms. And give it a second. And there we go, we get six milliohms. So let's go down now to 15 centimeters and see if we get a third of the nine ohm measurement. And in fact, we get three milliohms. So um, this is behaving exactly the way that we would expect it to do uh, after installing the Kelvin clamps and running through the calibration procedure. So what we did in the experiments that I'm about to describe is we measured using the DE5000 elements or lengths of this wire using the Kelvin clamps, but then we also used the original two-wire uh, alligator clip assembly. Uh, and then just to have something to compare it to, uh, I also used a simple four-wire measurement that I set up using two digital multimeters uh, and a current limiting bench power supply, as I've described in a previous video. This way, we can see how an instrument-based measurement or set of measurements compare to a more ad hoc approach. Let's look at the measurements for the 45 centimeter length of wire first. In the case of the alligator clips or the old leads, I took 10 measurements and recorded them here. So we have eight milliohms, eight, nine, seven, seven, nine, eight, and so on and so forth. When you average that, that gives you an average reading of 7.8 milliohms. When I measure with the Kelvin clamps, the measurements are extremely repeatable. They're all nines, giving, of course, the nine milliohm average measurement. And then measuring the voltage and current uh, using the bench setup, uh, I get a resistance of 10.1 uh, milliohms. That should actually be an ohm, uh, not a volt there. The theoretical measurement, if you recall, should be between 9.6 and 9.9 .9 milliohms. So the bench measurement and the Kelvin clamp measurement are, are clearly in the neighborhood. Now looking at the case of the 30 centimeter length of wire. For the case of the alligator clips, you can see much more variability. We have two 10 milliohm measurements. We have a couple of sixes, we have a seven milliohm measurement, a nine, a six, a five, and so on. Uh, when you take the average, it turns out to be about 6.8 milliohms. The Kelvin clamp based measurement, again, very stable, very steady. All of them are sixes, giving a six milliohm average. Uh, and then the bench approach uh, yielded an average of 6.8 milliohms as well. And then finally, uh, for the case of 15 centimeters of copper wire, you see that the alligator clip based measurement is very variable. Again, you know, it's everything from 5 milliohms to 1 milliohms with an average of 2.4. In this range, there is some variability in the Kelvin clip based measurement. They're almost all threes, but there were two measurements where there were. Uh, where the meter measured two milliohms, giving an average of 2.8 milliohms. And then finally, for the ad hoc approach, uh, we get an average of 3.2 milliohms as well. And you see that in this case, the theoretical measurement was between 3.2 and 3.3 milliohms. So what did the data mean? Well, in our case, we saw that the variance for one set of measurements increased dramatically at low resistances. Overall, the average readings had pretty good basic agreement with the theoretical predictions, although it's not exact. When all three measurements are compared, the bench or ad hoc measurement comes the closest consistently to the theoretical range. The DE5000 measurements show much less variation in the case of Kelvin clamps than in the case of the alligator clips. In the case of 15 and 45 centimeters, Kelvin-based DE5000 measurements are higher than the alligator clip-based measurements. That would probably be true for the case of 30 centimeters as well, if two outlier measurements are omitted. One final comment. To measure the long wire using short alligator clips, I had to bend the wire to make contact with the clips. This could affect the resistance if it changes the cross-sectional area. 
I don't think that happened, however, since I tried kinking the wire and doing Kelvin clamp measurements. No difference in the resistance was measured. All in all, I think these data suggest that the Kelvin clip based measurements are more stable and closer to what we would expect from theory than the alligator clip based measurements, at least for resistances in the 10 milliohm and less range. Put simply, the clips matter. I hope you found this interesting. If so, please give it a big thumbs up below. Thanks for watching.